This week I'm going to invite you to play with scale and what I'm going to demonstrate is firstly I'm going to draw these delicate little flowers big on a big scale so I'm going to do something small uh, large and then I'm going to choose something very large and draw it on a very small scale. And then I'm going to explore the possibility of putting those scales together. So, uh, where will I go? I, I want to make them big, so I'm not going to draw all of that, that head. I'll maybe just, just get one, one set of flowers here. No, maybe, oh, oh let's decide. Now let's just get one set of flowers, probably these. Because I want to have the experience of making something small, large. So I've got some white paper, some willow charcoal, and I'm going to put some pastels on top afterwards. So it is interesting, I hope you'll find it interesting, this business of working on different scales. Working on a big scale can be really great, really liberating. Uh, I mean, I'm not drawing that big here. I'm certainly scaling up my subject, that's for sure. Um, I don't think I like that. all falling over, don't fall over. Okay, I think I might go for that set up there, which I'm, I'm sure you're seeing something different. But I want to, I just want to make sure that I really get something big so that I have changed the scale significantly. And I suppose if I'm trying to create a sense of scale, I probably shouldn't, I should probably see if I can actually fill the page with my subject. You know, if, if they were so big that I couldn't fit them on, then we'd have a sense of scale. So that's what I should be aiming for, making them big enough to actually fill the whole bit of paper and more. So on the email I've included some images of a number of different artists who've worked with scale, some sculptors. There's Ron Muick, who um, I think had a background in, I don't know if he worked for Spitting Image, or certainly had a back background in sort of puppetry and uh, making maquettes for television and, and film and so on. And he... Uh, moved into fine art and produced these um, very striking sculptures, giant babies or small figures. Uh, I remember seeing a thing at the RSA with a, a very striking small figure of a, an almost naked man in a, a boat. Uh, and of course it you know, evokes all sorts of associations, Lilliput, the borrowers, um, Alice in Wonderland and so on and then there are other artists um, Klaus Oldenburg who was an American sort of pop artist and he would do he would produce these giant sculptures of things like of everyday objects like um, there's a clothes peg uh, I think it went for ice creams and things and they they became public sculptures so people would see huge they would be dwarfed by um, these giant versions of everyday objects so I've made a point firstly I wanted to fill the page I should really go bigger but I also now want to you know I want to make these well observed drawings you know apart from drawing on a large scale you know why else would I do this and it might actually be 
So yeah, drawing on large scale to get that um, kind of more liberating experience of sort of more gestural uh, work. That's a, that's a good reason to try this. But also um, a chance to really look closely. That's something. And I think to, to heighten that sense of scale by actually um, building up lots of detail. So that's my aim for this drawing. I'll put in a bit of colour now. See where that gets me. I'm sure that everything bounces around. So any kind of um, observational drawing like this, I think, is very satisfying, and you know you can take your time to build up the observations. What I would be doing would be this sort of drawing out the charcoal, blocking in a bit of colour, and then um, going back. So I suppose using the side of the pastel to block in areas of colour, and then going back with the tip of the charcoal, uh, or the tip of the pastel, to get in more sort of linear, finer observations. So once I've worked that in, I would then be coming back to get something of that. The, the, the detail and the, in some cases, the light, the lighter color. And I've done nothing with uh, a background, so I would also want to work a bit, perhaps with an eraser, which as you all know, is very difficult to spot among your pastels, but I also then like to start working along the edges here. So that's something small on a big scale, there's more I can do to that. But now I think I would like to go and draw the Scott Monument really small. So here's something very big, the Scott Monument. I would have gone to the bridges actually if I could have cycled there. But um, I'm going to do some very small scale drawings. I'll just show you. I folded, I've got a bit of A4 paper, but I folded it into eight. So I've got eight small sections because I do want to make this very big subject very small. And I thought I would make my life more interesting by working with a bit of ink and wash. And I think just to get the sense of scale, I don't think you're going to see that well because it's a bit dark, but to get the sense of scale, I'm actually going to start with a wash. So I've got my bit of sponge, and I'll put down some wash shapes first, because I want to fit this big rocket onto the page, and actually already it's gone wrong. So when I did my very small things so big that they didn't fit on the page, that was a good idea, but I need to make my very big thing perhaps a bit smaller than the page. So there's going to be a little bit of uh, coming to terms with the scale, which is what it's all about. 
of course. So that's a bit more helpful to, to get that kind of sense of scale. And I've brought ink and wash because I think that will make me work a little bit more loosely. How well you're going to see any of this, of course, is to be discovered. I'm going to do probably all my drawings from this view, but it would be wise of me to look around a bit and see, see how my large subject looks on a small scale. So as you can see, I'm no Stephen Wiltshire. I can't do all of this detail. Uh, I certainly can't do it from memory, but I want to get, you know, for this, this my choice of subject here, I do want to get a sense of the form, maybe even the angle that I'm looking at it. Uh, so, you know, whilst it's interesting to work on a much smaller scale with such a large subject, I think it's still good to try and identify, if you like, what matters. This, this is a very tall structure, full of detail. Like disaster there, and my ink just blew over. Never mind. Uh, so it's a small structure, but it's also a three-dimensional structure, and I want to get a sense of its its three dimensions. And actually, the line is quite nice to achieve that. So I think my I think my wash starts will be dry, so I'm going to work into one of those as well. And I'm just keen on the, the ink and the wash because it doesn't allow me to get too detailed. So I'm going to produce um, eight, eight of these and see whether they can serve some purpose in my um, putting together things that are big and small. So I'm back from my not uneventful trip to draw the Scott Monument. I only got seven, not eight. I had a lot of ink spills. I developed one or two of them with some chalk and I tried with the later ones, which you didn't see me do, to draw even smaller than um, the rectangle that I'd isolated from my A4 bit of paper. And I also um, tried a couple where I drew the trees around them, just in order to get, again, get a sense of scale. Um, I suppose I could have put in some sky, that might have had an effect as well. But now <clears throat> the task is to put these together. How am I going to work with these two elements of my small flowers made large and my large monument made small. So I often find that just charcoal rub away drawing is a good place to start because it's easy to generate, well for me it's easy to generate a tonal image <clears throat> which suits me uh, and once I've got a composition that I like Tonally, I can then uh, add colour and uh, I can make very quick changes to that um, initial composition idea. So I rub the charcoal into the white page and then I put the side of the charcoal draw out some of the main shapes. So I'm just trying to think, so what can I do to put these two together? I can work just you know, with a kind of realism. So 
our viewpoint is down in the flower bed where these flowers are. And then what well, I'm just I'm just trying to rearrange them so I can get a bit of a horizon. And then somewhere here on the horizon, I can have my monument. So that would just be working with a you know relatively realistic idea. So working with scale, I suppose, just as we experience it, when we're very close to the flowers, they are big. And when we are far away from the monument, it's small. So that would be one way of working. <clears throat> but I feel I should be more adventurous than that. And I wonder if instead of just being doing realism, should I work with a bit of surrealism? I mean, I'm wondering about, I've got these seven monuments. Is there something in that that I can do? <clears throat> anyway, let's just do a bit more to the, the realism. There are my kind of tonal shapes. And then I find the exciting bit is always when you take a rubber to it and you start to subtract. Now, I didn't do a fantastic job on my monument, I have to say, because I think there was a lot more I could have observed. But I blame the wind blowing over my ink for most of my failings out there. But I've got enough information in my drawings. And as ever, I think, you know, if you can work from drawings first, rather than photographs, you know, do a, do a drawing from your photograph if you want, to, if you have to use a photographic reference. But then, um, I should have some of those out there, shouldn't we? But then try and work from your drawings. Because you really will... Um, be better placed. You'll have you'll have edited your material in do you know by doing the drawings and something like the Scott Monument, which really needs editing, uh, is going to be helped by using that sort of a process. So let me just quickly put a bit of colour in there because I think that will give a sense of what it could look like. Particularly once I get some colour into the flowers. <clears throat> so giving me a bit of a feel for the sky. And then... If I were just to work with a kind of realistic combination, like this, there's still plenty to deal with in terms of scale, and particularly, I'm thinking particularly of the scale of the mark or the level of detail. You know, how detailed do I make these flowers? How detailed do I make the monument? I could actually push the, the balance either way. I could have a very detailed Scott monument with, you know, all of its carving and uh, intricacy and I could have my flowers kind of out of focus smudged, softened so that we know they're in the foreground because they're big but we look past them we look through them almost to the monument whose detail and contrast perhaps will draw attention or I could reverse it and I could make these flowers much more detailed, eye-catching. As I say, the, the position in the composition will mean the flowers will always stand out. But I'm quite interested in the idea of really 
really detailing this monument. And that might that might create almost a slightly dizzying sense of scale as we're drawn to something quite small in the drawing, which is highly detailed. So that's that's the kind of realism version. Perhaps I should get a bit of grass now. They're connected in some way, or they're surrounded in some way by grass and sky. Pause a moment while I try to have a, a different idea. So I've toyed a bit with the idea of seven Scott monuments, um, seeing them spread out on the page. But the other thing that occurred to me, seeing them, particularly the ones that are, the ones at the end where I really tried to fit them into the rectangle, is the idea of this very large monument being dominated by an enormous plant. So I thought I would get the Scott Monument. So I'm just using the ink and wash again as a start. I thought I would get it way down the page. Looking very small and vulnerable. And then I would get my plant tower over it and I suppose I mean this doesn't have to be s surreal surreal it might be again I dare say there are you can lie down in the grass and see this sort of arrangement but I think it's more effective in terms of scale because as I say this very large monument rather than just looking far away is actually being slightly overwhelmed by this monstrous plant. And I just find that quite easy to do with the ink and the wash. So I could get some ink lines in that. I could probably I should get a bit of Wash everywhere into these flowers so I can put some colour on. So let's pause while that dries. So I want to uh, use this study um, as a way of exploring this new arrangement. So I'm going to just keep to mix media, ink and some pastel, because this arrangement allows me to use the sky as a big part of my composition. And I think what I'll do this time, I don't know that I quite got the balance with the last one as the flowers. Well, actually, I was planning to make the Scott Monument. Yeah, I would like in this arrangement the Scott Monument to be very detailed. In this one, I think I'm going to keep it very simple. I like what the wash is doing. And I'm going to get more, more detail, more colour, more layering into the flowers, a monstrous plant. So I'm showing you these ways of working um, because you can see it's very quick. This is just the study, but if, if I've got a quick way of making a study, a quick and sort of flexible way, 
where nothing is too precious and where I can easily change change my mind, uh, then that's going to generate ideas uh, about how to develop this particular theme. bit of the ink on my monument. I'm going for fairly fine marks. So I don't think I want this to be too detailed. like the way the the two elements of the monument and the flower are treated differently so actually I'm after a, a less definition in the distant monument but the fact that it's treated in a, with a different style might may also add a A good way of distinguishing one from the other. <clears throat> and then just to conclude this, I think I want to build up, I want to connect them a bit more with my sky colours, which are limited at the moment, but I can build up. It'd be good to get some clouds in there as well, and maybe lighten it. So that's my second possibility, trying to convey something about the scale of these two elements. And in fact, now that I've lightened that, I would get some more wash on there. So something about the scale of these two elements, making them work together. To make an interesting image. So it's still not, yeah, that's that's the two possibilities that I've I've been thinking of. So I hope that you will find something very small, that you'll enjoy drawing perhaps in great detail, really examining very closely, trying to identify some of the characteristics that you want to emphasize in it, and then find something very large and try and reduce it in scale and then explore some possibilities of putting them together in some in some meaningful way in a, by meaningful I mean a way that will convey something of their um, individual scale okay I look forward to seeing what you've come up with bye bye <laughs>